grandfather, Alex Milikovsky, was a tailor. I wanted to acknowledge that Genesis story as much for me selfishly, but also to give more texture as to why we were pursuing this. So that gave birth to the idea of the shears. We call them the ghost shears. This idea of artists that never got their due, or kind of the ghost of the tailors that were, the ones that didn't get their proper shine. With this collection, I think one of the foundation is a attention to detail. And maybe it's a little bit of the jersey in me, like wanting to make the details conversational. When you kind of zoom in on the hardware, the trims, the usage of grow grain tapes, contrast fabrications on the inside cuffs, the uh, the back sides of the plackets, in places that, you know, putting contrast color where it's not obvious on the hanger, right? Where you have to discover it once you open the garment up, what I call like hanger appeal, that moment of engagement where, you, you know, someone's like, oh, wow, I didn't expect to see that tone of, of canary yellow popping on this coated black fabric. Some might think that the influence for the dark colors is living in the city. Well, that's definitely a part of it. There's like a Northeast or city influence, but it's really an honest conversation that just guys like black and dark charcoal <laughs> and navy and kind of familiar bases. So we, we want for that, but we want the stuff to feel enthusiastic, right? So the way we use color and we deploy color throughout the line is to try to express some of that. You'll see in details in the linings, in belts, in woven fabrications on bottoms, colors from the inside of the garments out and trims that really reflect the spirit of spring. I try to always use fabrications with like a lot of texture. So chambray, yarn dyed in a way that looks like or feels like visually denim and we weave the fabrics um, so that the contrast on the surface looks like an indigo denim but in fact it's not. I'd say there's items that are kind of must-haves that won't fail you if you invest in these kind of styling details and hopefully the Mark Echo Cut and Sew collection could be the answer for you. Number one, a blazer. Respect the outerwear game, right? Like rock a blazer with proper tailored armholes, proper armhole openings, cuff construction. You don't have to dress it up. You could rock it with shorts. You could rock it with a t-shirt. You needn't wear it with a tie. You could just square up, button your shirt all the way up, which is very much a, a trend. Another tip or theme is this kind of casual sophistication. If it was just purely casual, it'd be like white shirt, khaki button down, right? That's the formula. Our brand of a white shirt with our way of like twisting khakis lends through those details a different kind of sophistication. Contrary to popular opinion, sh shorts could be made to look good. Shorts needn't be only reserved for the barbecue, all right, or for the beach, or for looking clumsy. And our assortment of shorts allow you to kind of dress up the short game. We trimmed the short cuffs with like menswear fabric details, stripes, yarn dye stripes, chambrays, etc., to give you a little bit of contrast. But again, also to lend to that discovery of detail. One of the details, our assortment of solid shirts this year, especially where we play with some of these spring tone colors, it's these kind of like non solid solids that I like to call them. We have great details like the solid colored cuffs on the underside of the cuff, but the cuff was designed so that you could wear it with the solid color out, kind of creating that formal, clean white cuff look with your shirts. So you get again that, that mix of the textured chambrays with these clean, solid pops. Contrary to popular opinion, the vest is an essential part of a proper cut and sew look going forward for 2013 spring. It's been one of the reliable beats in menswear where guys can quickly kind of wink to their, their sophistication or their appreciation for kind of looking a little bit more grown up by wearing the vest. I think about my legacy, the most important, crucial, number one legacy when I, is what's the legacy my kids will have of me? That's number one, right? I kind of really don't give a rat's ass, you can beat that, about the perception of legacy outside of that. Because I feel like if I reconcile and solve for that, everything else will work, work itself out. That's the most prescriptive course, I think, to fulfilling a legacy that's important, a legacy that'll stand up 
and one that ultimately you can make peace with, right? And that's where I intend to live my life. So 20 years from now, I will for sure have done that. Hopefully, what will come from that is a lot of really cool shit. <laughs>